And so I said, okay, the New Testament's reliable, but does that mean Christianity is true? No, it doesn't. How do I know whether Christianity is actually true or not? And so for the next few years, we embarked on an investigation into the evidence of Christianity versus the evidence of Islam. I was trying to convert him to Islam. He's trying to convert me to Christianity. Um, and we would just share the arguments. Now, you might be saying, what, what, what do you mean evidence for a faith? Don't you just pick a faith based on what appeals to you? And I would say, no, there's so many different faiths out there. You've got Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism. You, you've, you've got, of course, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, the big three monotheistic faiths. All these different faiths, different faiths appeal to different people. Usually, the faith you were raised in appeals to you more than every other faith does. But that doesn't make the faith true. What makes a faith true and what makes it false? And it took a long time. This wasn't an overnight event. But after about a year, I came to the conclusion, all right, the New Testament manuscripts are reliable. I didn't believe in the gospel or anything like that. It was just the New Testament manuscripts. It took me a year. But I realized the way that the New Testament manuscripts proliferated, the way they were written down and sent throughout the early church, there was no one who was able to control these manuscripts and edit them in such a way that a change would not be detected simply no way to do that. So after about a year, I came to the conclusion that there is no way for the New Testament to have been uniformly and undetectably altered. Not possible. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But what I noticed about that when I was a Muslim trying to investigate whether Christianity or Islam is true, is that these are three historical claims. Did a man named Jesus claim to be God? Did he then prove it by dying and rising from the dead? Does the evidence show that he died on the cross and does the evidence show he rose from the dead? Interestingly, Islam denies all three of these points. Chapter 4 verse 157 of the Quran says he, does not die, he did not die on the cross. Chapter 5 verse 72 of the Quran says he was not God. He didn't claim to be God. So when you establish the case for one, you're actually bringing down the case for the other. This is why when people say all religions teach the same thing, I'm like, that's an absurd statement. These are diametrically opposed.